You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, let's show them. Guys, I gotta say, playing strip poker at 9 a.m. with someone who looks exactly like you, some of the most fucked up shit. He's right. How about we make it a little more interesting? If I win this hand, I get Jack Eichel. If you win this hand, I'll give you some prospects for free. Bad idea, Sabres low claw. Deal. Deal. Four aces. <laughs> Read them and weep. A Donald Trump super fight card, a Dave and Buster's power card, a Metro card, and the two jokers we removed from the deck. I don't know what I'm doing. Sounds like I just built myself a super team. Shit. Well, good luck, Vegas. Have fun trying to fit that under the salary cap. Salary cap? Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. That is a job. And before you say it's just Detroit, I know it's just Detroit, but last year we couldn't seem to beat teams that we were supposed to beat. And Detroit has seemed to turn a corner a little bit to get more competitive. Lucas Raymond is a beast, but we took care of business. We should feel good about that. It was a dominant win. The only doubt in the game was the first eight minutes, and then we took completely over. It answered a couple questions. Hello, Captain. Hello, Power Play. That was actually something to do with the Red Wings' fault as well. Their penalty kill made a massive mistake that we will talk about. But we have to talk about two things first, both of them sad. Jerry Remy. Rest in peace, my man. An absolute legend. I'm not a big baseball guy. But Remy meant a lot to Boston. And he was the voice of Boston for a long time. So just want to do condolences there. And then we got to talk uh, about Vegas continuing to be assholes. They don't have... I, the cap doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Once again, they get the big fish. Buffalo sends Jack Eichel, might have heard of him, and a third round pick to Vegas for Tuck, Krebs, a first rounder, top 10 protected, not like that actually matters, and a third round pick. I just want to touch on this really quickly because a lot of people are saying Buffalo got fleeced again. Eh, given the situation they were in, they got a really solid top six guy in Tuck, underrated, two-way, does it all. Krebs, who's a great prospect and a potential first liner, a first round pick that was never going to be top 10 because a contender was going to go for Eichel anyway, and a third round basically pick swap. Is it a lot for a generational talent? No, but you never get the value of a generational talent. They got pieces that match their timeline. These guys are locked in for the long term. Tuck has five years left, and Krebs is in the first year of his ELC. They have team control over these guys for a long time. It matches their time frame. They're not going to go running for the hills. They can still flip them if they feel like that's the move. I don't like that idea. That is about as good as they were going to get. The question is, how does Vegas afford this? I think there has to be a little more money movement. The IR, the LTIR plays a role in this. So I don't fully understand it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I know you accrue trade deadline money cap space as people stay on the IR. I think there still has to be a little shuffling. We will see, though. Not my pig, not my farm, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let's talk about this game, though. Swayman gets to start. Love to see it. He was really good, although playing cold the entire game. Still no Foligno, unfortunately. Here are your lines. Forbort remains with McAvoy, although those pairings get shuffled a lot throughout the game. But the majority of the time is spent with the lineups as you see them. Pasta back to the top line. Smith back to the second. Like I said, that's something they'll just pull out when there's just not a lot going on. Now, people are going to talk about Pasta and Hall still struggling here. We're going to get there. It's not as bad as you think, though. This is Cliffy Hockey's 100th game. That might feel kind of wrong. How has he only played 100? Because it gets taken out of the lineup all the time because it does stupid shit. We have won one of our last six meetings against the Red Wings, which is a bizarre stat when you consider what the Red Wings have been for the past four years. Luckily, and I've said this before, the Red Wings made a huge mistake this game. 
Let's talk about it. Puck drops and a buck 30 and it's Fabry with a wide open chance because Carlo gets caught in a transition. He moves f too far into the slot. Fabry rings the bar and you pucker a little bit. And you go, that's not the way we want to start it. Three minutes in, it's bad turnovers by Cliffy and Riley leading to Wings ice time, leading to Wings offensive ice time. Howla takes a tripping penalty. There's going to be some bad tripping penalties in this game. Just obnoxiously bad. This team is not disciplined when it comes to getting sticks and skates. Of course we kill it. In the first eight minutes, like I mentioned before, geez, not good. I could not think of a real scoring chance we had in the first eight minutes, which might be too high of a criticism, but like get a shot sort of on net, get a chance going. We are getting hemmed into the zone, bad turnovers, took a little while to get our footing, but nine minutes in and it's a great shift by the second line. It's some really nice pressure and you can feel the team starting to wake up. And as we wake up, we start to get more physical. And Nemesnikov takes a really strange and really stupid penalty. It's a rare one. It's playing without your helmet. Nemesnikov gets his bucket rocked off of him. As he's coming back to the bench, to his to his point, he is going back to the bench while this happens. He decides to hit a Bruins player while they're part of a scrum that's right in front of the bench. Can't do that. You can't involve yourself in the play whatsoever. The ref is watching you skate across. It was very clear that you were skating to the bench and then decided to play. That's going to get called. So we're going to the power play, and this is where the mistakes start. But it wasn't super evident right away because this is off a set play. Bergie wins the faceoff right away. Goes to McAvoy at the point. McAvoy feeds Marshan at the bottom circle, right circle. He feeds it right back up to Bergie in the high bumper, and he just smashes this low blocker. It's 1-0. Bergie's on the board. Power play goal. That's our captain. Can't keep him down. Can't keep him down. 3.46 left in the period and McAvoy gets tripped. And we're going back to the power play and my stupid brain blacked this out because I got really confused. I thought we were perfect on the power play until later in the game. We get a ton of close calls, but we do not score on this one. Ending the period 1-0. We outshot them 12-3. Not too shabby. Cliffy and Riley, bad turnovers. That's my big criticism of the period. That pairing... Really weird turnovers, but in hindsight, the turnovers outside of the first couple minutes didn't lead to much. They're very quick getting back to their zone. That pairing's strange, though. Second period starts, and it is five minutes of Red Wings kind of fighting back a little bit. Outside of a couple 2v1s where we don't even get a shot on net, the Red Wings have this pocket of the game. It very quickly comes back our way, though, and eight minutes in, pasta, pasta, pasta. He's just got to restart, man. Start from scratch. He gets a wide open net from beautiful feed from Marshy. Puck doesn't bobble on him. He just heals it. Straight up misses the shot. Oof, that was a bad one. You could tell he's frustrated out there. You really can. I'm okay if Pasta needs a little time. He, he can go through slumps, whatever. This team is built to survive individual slumps. We really are. He'll get back to it. I'm not worried about Pasta. I'm not worried about Hall. When's the last time we had a Hall breakaway? I mean, it feels like it's been a long time, and that's something that he's kind of known for, right? Haven't seen it. Ten minutes into the second period, and it's the strangest part of the game by far. McAvoy, with the worst turnover I've seen him do in a long time, gets his pocket picked by Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi and Raymond go on a 2-V-O. No one in front of him going after Swayman. Bertuzzi gets the puck over to Raymond. Raymond looks like he's going to take it in. He does take it in. Swayman makes the save. While this is happening, McAvoy's trying to get back into the play, tries to cut across Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi slashes the stick out of his hands. That's interference, bud. You can't do that. You just took a penalty on a 2v0. I've never seen the team that had the two on none take the penalty. And it was a good call, too. You watch the replay. At first, I was like, oh, no, this is some bullshit. I watched the replay. That's a good call. Bizarre, terrible de decision by Pertuzzi, and it would get worse. Because it's another power play goal. It's Pasta on the wall, left wall. He's punching the puck through to the back of the net. Hall was there, too. I wasn't quite sure if Hall got a piece of this, but it gets to Marshy. Marshy, behind the net, casually feeds Bergie, who's up in the high bumper again. Again, blocker side. Again, goal. That's two for Bergie. Two PB goals. But you start to notice something. Now, this was a transition from the left side to the right, right? I looked back at that first goal. And even though it was off a set play, the Red Wings were so preoccupied with taking away Pasta's one-timer in the left dot that they're playing a 3v4 everywhere else. 
and it's giving more space to Bergeron and his bumper. Bergeron's been the bumper guy for years, man. Like, you want to talk about shots that are just as dangerous as Pasta's one-timer? It's Bergey needing 0.4 seconds to get a stick, the puck off his stick in the bumper. Shortly after this, Jakey with a huge block. That's right, Jakey boy. But he takes it to the leg, goes down to the room, comes right back. Two minutes later, he's back on the bench because he's a warrior. Five minutes left in the second period. We have a two-goal lead. This is where you cannot give up a stupid goal at the end of the second period, giving them life in the third. And we almost do exactly that. But there's a man on a mission. He's been cold this entire game. I believe they literally only have seven or eight shots at this point. It's a cross-crease pass, a beauty of one. Defensive laps. Raymond gets it. Swayman's coming across. Full movement, full horizontal. What's going to happen? Glove safe. Snag that! Swayman had to play this entire game cold, and he still made these huge saves. You love, you love to see it. And we're out here having fun. Let's highlight a little fun moment. Puck gets shot on Grice. Grice makes the save in his chest, by the way. And Hall skates up behind him and acts like the puck went through his legs and starts swatting behind him like he's pushing the puck into the net. And Grice, like, turns his head like, oh, shit, but doesn't drop the puck. That's funny. That is funny no matter who you are. And then a few minutes later, oh, it's another peepee. Cider goes for holding. Didn't love this call. Felt a little weak. But Bershey is in the bumper. Marshy is on the right dot. McAvoy's at the point. It goes Bergey to McAvoy to Marshy to Bergey in the bumper. And again, he has room because, again, they are leaving one man on an island with Pasternak. There's too much room. And again, blocker side. That's a natural hattie for your captain, Patrice Bergeron. You just love to see that, man. We go into the third up 3-0. There's nothing negative to say. There's no one who's dragging this team down. Everyone looks good. Detroit can't hold the puck to save their life. Bergeron's stat line so far, four shots, three goals, 12 for 14 from the dot. That is ridiculous. And then we're going to make it a little hard on ourselves. Right away in the third period, Nemestikov gets tripped by Clifton. It's a bad penalty to take immediately in the period. We do kill it, though. Detroit, to their credit, really good that first five minutes. Six minutes in, they also get another power play. Pasternak, high sticking, just brutal to take these right now. And then 50 seconds later, Bergy for tripping. So it's 5v3 for a minute 10 without Bergeron on the penalty kill. And they're going to score on that 5v3. It's, a, it's just a cross-slot pass. There's no way Swayman can make this save. I mean, this is just very cleanly, cleanly done. Very quick. There's just no goalie on earth that can make this. So we allow that goal. We still have to kill off the rest of the penalty, which we do. I would not be feeling great right now if, um, if we don't get it back while we kill off that penalty. Yeah, buddy! The Red Wings had the push. And Nostic finds Lazar behind them during a clearance. Lazar gets a clean breakaway. Grice makes the first save. Riley's right behind him to just pound the puck in. That's Riley's first goal as a Bruin, I believe. That's kind of funny to think about. But hey, back up 4-1. That's a shorthanded goal. Not worried about this game anymore. We will get another one for the captain, though. Oh, yes, we will. Late in the third period. Just transitioning to the zone. It's a nice feed from Riley. Back to Marshy, just drops it back after he gains his own. Marshy finds Bergey on the far right side, who just slams this at Grice. Wasn't really aiming, it doesn't look like. Sneaks under a pad, thing at eyes. That's 5-1, that's your final! We outshot them 37-15. to That's a big difference. This game was dominant. Swayman had a good game. He was cold, like I said. He was cold for all this, but still made big saves when he needed to. Here's a fun stat. Bergeron came into this game with zero goals in seven games. Now he's tied for the team lead with Marshand with four. You go, Captain. More game notes. Uh, I feel like Pasta and Hall miss scoring. They miss it. They want to get back into it. They will. I'm really not worried about them. This season's probably going to see a lot of individual efforts through games, right? They're going to have certain people that just, this is their game, this isn't their game on the top six. Hall and Pasta are still playing really well. They're just not finding the back of the net. And if they're not allowing anything the other way, we're good. It's still early in the season. We want to build up, build up, build up as we go through. It's really strange the third line doesn't score more. The third line is so good. Howla, 
DeBrusque, and really whoever's on the wing, but it's Lazar right now. They just keep pounding, man. They're playing really well. Tons of forecheck, tons of scoring chances, tons of high danger chances. No one's firing the back of the net. That's going to change. They're going to start sinking a few of these, and it's going to feel real good. Our bottom six continues to impress. Frederick continues to be a quietly simple player who can bring out the nasty as a trump card, but he's doing the simple things that help us win hockey games. Nosek is awesome. We've been through that. Kuhlman, really playing well. That's an NHL player right there. A bottom six NHL player, but hey, that still means you're top thousand in the world. Good for you, bud. Riley and Clifton continue to be a weird pair. They certainly force the puck up really well. A lot of scoring chances while they're on the ice. This game isn't a great reflection of what I think that pair is, though, because I feel like more chances normally would go against us the other way. But there were no scoring chances at all against us in any way. This was just dominant. But that's a, that's a pairing to raise your eyebrow at as we continue to watch and try to figure out exactly what they are. Genuinely happy with the game. I mean, we started slow. And then we tried to give it away first half of the third. But overall, it's a really good effort. It's a lot of things hit the back of the net. I'm happy. You should be happy. There's nothing really to criticize about this effort at all. I did ask for a couple of uh, listener questions here. Um, first one, uh, well, these two kind of go along with each other. Can Bergeron be my daddy if I'm eight months older? Yes, Bergeron is all our daddy. That's just how it works, and we love him. Along with that one, did Bergie play well? To bear shit in the woods and then use rabbits to wipe the butt? Yeah, he played well. Is Grizzlick a magical defenseman unicorn who just works wherever he plays? Kinda. Like, Grizzlick doesn't change. And I guess maybe this is a negative. His game doesn't change if you pair him with someone different, right? He is responsible defensively, I think. He doesn't have all the muscle in the world and can get pushed off of pucks at times. But technically, he's really sound for a smaller guy in winning puck battles. Also, shout out Jake DeBrusque winning a lot of puck battles. I'm happy with Grizz no matter where he goes. I think he's an effective top four defenseman. I just like him best with McAvoy. This is a really tough one. Where do you have Bergie in your all-time bees list? Now, this could change. I might say this a hundred different times. Bergie is my all-time favorite Bruin, and that's not going to change. Uh, I mean, I've just watching him through his whole career has been a blessing and for all of us. Bobby Orr's got to be number one. And then it's so tough, right? Like, there's just so many names that you could go with. But I do think I have him number two. I think he's the second best Bruin all time. And that's saying a lot. He will be in the rafters. And I'm very excited about that ceremony. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a full list of like my top 15, 15 Bruins. That could be fun. I'll, I'll think about that. But yeah, Bergy, I just can't think of another name that I would put ahead of him. Yeah, I don't think I can put anyone else ahead of Bergy, as it is. And that's it's a, probably a little bit of recency bias, but God, I just, he's everything that, it, that, that this team needs. The leadership we talk about all the time, but just a great human being and an amazing hockey player. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting him second on my list. All right, guys, it does it for me. Upcoming game tomorrow. Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, you know him? I know him. You know him? It's at Toronto. I'm feeling good about it. Like, they're on a four-game win streak. They can't keep winning forever, right? Come on. Go Bees!